By 1970, the Plymouth Barracuda received a major design revision by Chrysler stylist John Hurlitz. Hurlitz knew a thing or two about what a cool car should look like, as he had penned the awesome Barracuda SX concept car a few years earlier. The third generation Barracuda had to look great, but also had to be a hot performer to compete in the escalating muscle car wars. Hurlitz took the B-body chassis, stretched the nose and shortened the deck, but the secret sauce was to make the car wider. Now Pontiac used to brag about wide track handling, but in this case, the added width was to be able to fit an elephant in the nose, and more on that later. The 1970 Barracuda came out in three submodels: the Barracuda, the Barracuda Grand Coupe, and the abbreviated Cuda for the high performance crowd. The fresh Cuda design featured a wide front grille with two headlights and a variety of hood options, including the IQE CAG Scoop, which was an acronym for the incredible quivering exposed cold air grabber scoop, more commonly known as the shaker. Even the base Cuda hood had twin power bulge scoops. The lines were clean and lean, with plenty of options to personalize your ride, including body-colored elastomeric front and rear bumpers, body-colored or chrome racing mirrors, rally or road wheels, sawtooth trim jazzed up the rocker panels, vinyl tops including gator grain and wild mod tops, hockey stick striping, and of course, a wide array of colors. Base Barracuda engines included the 198 and 225 slant sixes, but Cudas came with a 335 horsepower 383 as standard equipment, but there was much more left in the option bin. You see that new extra wide E-body chassis also accepted not only the powerhouse 440 V8, but also swallowed up the giant 426 Hemi engine with ease. And now we're talking. But before we get all high and mighty with the Hemi Cuda, there was another cool small block version for 1970 only, and that was the AAR Cuda, a street going road race tribute to the Dan Gurney All American Racers Trans Am car. These featured a fiberglass hood dipped in organosol black texture paint, lower front spoilers, fog lamps, side trumpet exhaust tips a rear spoiler, staggered tire sizes, and a hot 290 horse 340 with three two barrels under the hood. It's too bad that this was a one year only car as it remains one of the hottest looking muscle cars ever. Upping the game were the four or six barrel 440s with 375 and 390 horsepower respectively, topping out at the infamous 426 Hemi with two four barrels making 425 horsepower and 490 pound-feet of torque. Torque flight three-speed automatics and four-speed pistol grip manuals were available either way. Chrysler's proven torsion bar front suspension and heavy-duty shocks and rear leaf springs provided great handling for 1970 and good road feel even today. The new 1970 Cuda had just about anything you could ask for. So, how do you improve on something like that? Well, Plymouth decided to turn the visuals up a notch with the 1971 update. New for 1971 was the four headlight front design, split by one of the coolest grills ever designed. It featured a series of six forward-leaning grill openings centered in an anthracite gray or body-colored surround, and really looked tough when the body-colored elastomeric bumpers were ordered along with it. The power bulge hood changed a bit, sliding the scoops back towards the windshield, but the shaker was still a hot item in 1971. Cuda Fenders got a new signature design element, the Cuda Gills, not found on regular Barracudas or Grand Coupes. And Plymouth went all out with the optional giant billboard stripes, calling out the engine size for all the world to see. Different high impact colors were added and vinyl tops were still on the option list. Add in the rear window louvers, rear spoiler, and a new rear taillight treatment, and you can see just how different the 71 Cuda was from the 1970 cars. Even the bucket seats were redesigned, along with some cool new options like an 8-track recorder in the dash that either recorded tunes off the radio or your own thoughts with a microphone. All told, there were over 75 different options to personalize your Cuda. The good thing is that they didn't change the power plants for 1971. 
you could still get all the big V8s, but compression and power dropped in all but the 426 Hemi. And that was just a sign of the times with new measurements for measuring power and new fuel requirements changing the compression game. With the dynamite looks, high performance drivetrains, and the wide variety of options making many CUDAs unique, it's no wonder why 70 and 71 CUDAs are hot with collectors, especially the Hemi CUDA convertibles, as there was only a room full of them ever produced. And most of those were assembled in one room at the Muscle Car and Corvette Nationals a while back. It was truly an amazing sight. But the CUDA ended with the 1974 model year, and our friend John Hurlitz went on to design K cars in the 80s. Hey, somebody had to do it. But he eventually retired from Chrysler as Senior VP of Design. You can check out johnhurlitz.org to see some of his awesome concept renderings. The Brothers Collection is a virtual aquarium of CUDAs, including Mr. Hurlitz's former personal demonstrator car. We've put a link to a playlist of many that we featured in the description of this video. We think the best one is the 70 CUDA, or maybe it's the 71. I don't know. Which is your favorite? Share your thoughts in the comments, and we'll be back next time with more from the Brothers Collection on Muscle Car of the Week.